Hello everyone. G'day, g'day. And welcome to episode number 36 of Ask Ernst Live. Number 36 number indeed. Number 36. Unfortunately I missed 35, but it looked like you guys had a lot of fun. You missed 35, it was really good fun actually. <laughs> and good. you were watching us. I was watching yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, on the other side of that camera. Side. Yeah, it was good. Great, so. Very different episode last week. Yeah. Today back to the standard format. Mm -hmm. But, we're going to do some tutorials today. Tutorials? Yeah. Are they tutorials? Well, well, I guess so. They're sort of really quick guides. Quick, quick guides, yeah. yes. Going to have a bit of a practical um, live show today. So a bit different. Yep. Uh, before we start, got quite a few people live. Hello, one. Good Tony, as usual. Hello. Today. Uh, what are we going to have? We're going to have a competition starting. Yep, I just loaded up the next competition. Yes. So, you probably know we've had uh, quite a few competitions. We did them during uh, lockdown and such. Yeah. I think it was a really good idea because it allowed everyone to get involved. Definitely. Um, learn from other people's work as well because as you post up stuff, we get you to post up your work in progress as that's well. Right. That's a huge percentage of the points. And there's also prizes as well. So, the latest one we've done, I thought we'll do something that's really popular again. Definitely. And it's going to be on dioramas. So, it's live now, so if you want to uh, join in the competition, it can be anything that you've already started, anything you've already finished, um, or if you want the challenge, start it now. So, it's going to be about three weeks, yes. so there's plenty of time to do something from scratch if you want to. Definitely. But there's also plenty of time for all this other stuff that you've already do, done Absolutely. before. And as usual, if you have something that you're already working on, that's perfectly fine, so carry on with that yep. and submit it at the end. So. That's, uh, that's really a good option. So yeah. anything that you've finished will be an option too, mm. provided you have work in progress photos. That's obviously. right, yeah. So. Because the whole idea is everyone gets to learn and they'll see other people's work and you're inspired by everyone else's yeah. stuff. Some small tips can make a big difference. Yes. You know, you, you try and try and try until you see someone else doing what you wanted to do and, and yes. then you know, you can even get in contact, I guess, with, with other, uh, other people and get that's some right. info from there. So. Yeah. New competition, we haven't done one since uh, December, I think, that no, was the last right. one. Yes. Uh, everyone got busy with Christmas, and yep. so we're just uh, good to go again now. So, yeah. Very good, I can see quite a few people online. Damien Taylor, Tony, and Travis, hello there. Hello everyone. So, some interesting news from SCX, actually, for those Lockcast lovers. There's mm. uh, apparently a CUDA coming uh, from SCX. Very American style car. This yes. will be hopefully arriving uh, in the next few weeks. We don't we have confirmation yet, but okay. uh, uh, it will be in limited edition. So let's keep a, keep an eye out on our page. We should get you some information soon. So that's exciting. I very mean, exciting. It's a, it's a really classic. Really classic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sixties muscle car. Very nice colors too. Some of you may have seen them on on some YouTube videos, mm. but uh, we will have more info hopefully by Monday or Tuesday. That's cool. So, Keep an eye out for that. Uh, and I remember this thing. We got this car here at the front. I think it's an easy one. Oh, is I don't it? know. I don't know. I think the color is impossible to, to guess. Yeah, so get, guessing the name of the color is a bit of a tricky one. Absolutely. But so what car is this? What car is this? Mm. And what color? What yeah. scale? And yeah. what? Obviously, what year yes. as well? Yes. Don't read it. Warwick read the, the year last week. <laughs> Straight away. First thing. <laughs> Right stating the obvious. <laughs> stating the obvious, so I'm let's not read excited. it. You're what? You're so exciting. Oh, it's exciting, exciting, yes. But yes. anyway, so we ended up guessing the car last week, and here we go again. Good so, stuff. What else we have? You've done lots of videos this week. We lots did. of unboxing. Um, we did. Lots of tutorials. Yes. So, so oh, I guess a lot of viewers uh, may not be aware of that uh, we've got a lot of tutorials on YouTube yes. now. And um, I think it's really useful that um, there's tutorials. We're trying to get stuff that's uh, simple skills that um, uh, will really enhance Definitely. the modeling and um, also for the ready control side of it as well because sometimes it can be really, really technical. I think we need to go back to basics. Of, mm. of it's often we, we don't know what we don't know really and we're yes. kind of afraid to ask the basic questions, mm. you know, even how to bind the radio or how to, yes. to mix colors, you know, I guess mm. it's something we learn at school when we're yes. very little and then as yes. we grow up, don't remember really the, the idea of that anymore, but it's really important if you're modeling, mixing oh, colors, sure. you know, yes. if you're missing that specific gray, you can definitely yeah. recreate that gray so, with, yeah. uh, with a couple of colors. Really. For sure. Yeah, so fundamentals and then a little bit of um, further advancement too. So we've got a new playlist with the uh, Scale 75 Artist um, colors there. Yes. So we've got the introduction where it goes through the color wheel, and then we've got three sections uh, which show you how to paint a figure. Definitely. Mm. So jump on our YouTube channel and have a look and make sure you comment and let us know what you would like to see next as well because that helps yeah. us to uh, understand where to go. Yeah, that's right. So be really good. Mm. Um, I would like to make a comment for you guys too. Yes. Um, we also have blogs that will be accompanying those videos too as we go along. Yep, so that's people true. people rather read rather than watch. Yes, 
the same blogs obviously the same videos would be turned into blogs or are being turned into blogs so yeah. if you jump on a blog section on uh, our website you can actually read uh, as well which is yes. going to be somehow nice and yeah. some pictures so they give you different different feel perhaps as well yeah so. this is like the magazine style yeah. because you get your reference right Definitely. on your on the spot rather Definitely. than sometimes when you go into a video you have to just absolutely chop it up to see yeah. where you're at very good so with some guesses here i think it's a holden that's a holden tony he always gets pretty good answers, yeah i think he? he's pretty close yeah he's pretty quick with things like that he's pretty close yeah so, yeah yep. okay that's, that's good that's a good start yep. tony that's one aspect very good so today we're back at uh, talking about Hearn's workshop yeah it's good we haven't done it for a little while yes uh, so we've got a few new sets here they're becoming available very soon mm -hmm. just on the last few print runs i guess yeah and the last few days so it's popping up here yep let's change the angle there here we go so we've got a bit of for everyone today so we have train stuff yep on this side here yep got armor i guess 135th scale armor yeah well you could use that with anything civilian, really. civilian stuff civilian too. stuff as yeah. well yeah yeah so some crates and then it's lock cars yes. so this is still a work in progress so yes Let's start from, I think one of the most exciting ones is the railway buffer stop. Yes. Which is this one here. So this is a set with six buffer stops yeah. uh, for Victorian rail type uh, diorama or railway sets. Yeah. So it will come as I say, in a set of six and you've got two different variations. So this is the more basic one, which gives you the two posts and the board. Mm -hmm. It does have all the details with the, uh, the, uh, bolts. With the bolts up here. Mm. Let's see if you can see, we can see nicely. Uh, with the bolts up here and yep. uh, and all the boards uh, and this is the simple version so if you don't know what a buffer stop is this is the it's like the fence which is at the end of uh, some rail so when yes. you're parking the train and it's basically to stop it from like traveling right. all the way through falling That's off the right. end of the track and these particular ones they're prototypical Victorian, Victorian ones, ones. Yeah. yeah so, so standard um, and then we have a more detailed version which is mm -hmm. this one here yeah this is actually being reproduced from the original drawings mm. um, available from uh, I think VR Victoria Rail yes and um, they include also the um, all the construction the um, how do we call it it's like the foundation the foundation exactly yes yeah. the foundation so uh, this is more detailed there, mm. there will be a bit more work to install them actually yes but they'll be really good for a uh, diorama type for sure scenario Absolutely. where you may have them exposed perhaps yes so if it's an unused um, rail uh, where you want to see all that uh, foundation visible then these would be perfect yes because they need to be um, inset exactly. into the base a bit so the rail will effectively sit on top of these slippers here yes uh, and so the rail will be above here so in, in once it's fully installed on a railway set this yep. the, the bottom part here will be fully covered yep. with ballast and so forth yes so you probably don't see it. that's why we produce those which yeah. are actually uh just the post with a with a board yeah effectively so, so these will be available in the next few days mm -hmm. and they are designed for uh ho and double o scale type um uh sets really yes yeah cool okay so that's one number two mm. okay so video this is definitely done your uh type of dioramas this yes way. so it's a selection of crates so we've got some ammo crates there's a, a german uh, machine gun ammo crates so for the mg38 42 type uh multi-purpose machine gun and then there's open crates as well like for food um and then there's uh, sealed crates as well so equipment crates this stuff here yeah and then it's uh, ammo crates ammo yeah the screws. yep let's see if you can see them up here it's a bit small this one's here three ammo boxes yep and we've got a couple of different sizes yeah so wooden open crates, wooden crates. Wooden yep. open crates. so we're producing these in different scales which will be definitely 35th scale for a start yes and probably 70 second as well i guess yes uh, perhaps 48 hmm. so that will cover all your typical diorama scales yeah we can Very do nice. them bigger if anyone wants anything bigger i guess That's you right. can produce them individually as you get bigger i guess we'll have to split the set the set is going to be sold this kind of configuration yep. so that's a bit of a mix yeah except the simple things like this add so much to a diorama yes that's yeah. right so okay this diorama set yep. and then we are almost finishing the slot car set this is in 30 second scale obviously yeah and we'll come with a mix uh set of uh uh tools and and uh i guess equipment yeah. for uh, for a garage type 
Yeah, so we've got scenario. some Witches hats, there's the, uh, uh, the Rolling Jack. Rolling Jack. Uh, there's uh, air filters. Car battery. A, yep, a tool set. So spanners and um, oil bottles. And oil bottles, yes. yes. Yeah. And a spray can as well. Oh, spray, spray cans, cans yeah. yeah. So yeah. A, bit of, uh, a bit of a variety that would be quite nice, I get in, in a slot car layout. Yeah. Uh, that's how we designed it originally. Mm. But we're going to produce this in 24 scale as well. Yes. And that would be good for uh, your uh, 24 scale car that runs. Yeah, for sure. Which would be quite nice. Yeah. So, uh, so as you see, a lot of work has been put in the past couple of months. And uh, quite a few sets are going to be released mm. very soon. Yep. These are, these are looking really good. They're, they're Definitely. Pretty close to um, production. These are production ready. These are production ready. Mm. These other two uh, need a little bit more attention. But this one and this one here should be yep. coming out very soon next week we'll probably do a quick tutorial on how to use them yes um, and then probably next week we'll have more development on the little tram so ah oh, yes little tram is our favorite yep so it's got an adopted name now <coughs> it's got an adopted name yep it's called plugger so got some friends here we got some people from twitch very good so uh, looks like we've got some suggestion on the car here oh yes what have we got now? Oh, that is a lot. Oh. So. Everyone's saying Holden? Paul Richard uh, suggests EH Holden 5 door station wagon 1963 1965. That is very, very detailed. Uh, and. Uh, it's pretty spot on, isn't it? It's pretty spot on, yeah, yes, indeed. All right. Yeah, it probably was a bit easier, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, Tony also suggests a 63 EH Holden. Right. Very close. And do we have any more guesses? I think that's it. I think but we're still missing the color. Yes, the we need color. the color. So that, color. That's, that's the thing the we're riding part. on. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. the color's gonna last us to the end of the show, I think. Yes, hopefully. Definitely. It's a very special name. So good. So we've got questions here. We've got Anthony coming online. There's quite a few today. That's yes. very good to see. Uh, there is a question from Twitch for you guys. Yes. <clears throat> uh, we've got Cypher's Corner asking, when do we start on building a, su a successful empire atop the bodies of the fallen as a resin print? <laughs> Which one? Uh, I, I, I don't know. When are we going to start out? I don't know. We'll, we'll put in a list. Thank yeah. you for the question. We'll put in yes. a list on, on things to develop again. We're actually yep. a long list at the moment. We have. Probably the next couple of months are full. Probably longer. Yeah, yeah. well, look, we're always going to need ideas anyway. But we definitely have it to the list. And as yes. we go along, you know, make sure you comment to our uh, social media during the week so yep. that we get an idea of what you would like to see on, uh, uh, on the Hearns Workshop range. Yep. Got quite a lot of stuff in the works at the moment. Luger trams just yep. came out last week. So there'll be a couple of different variations of the tram. Yep. And there'll be a different probably tram again. Yes. And uh, a lot more. For sure. So. Yep. So moving things. You moving know. things. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely a lot more. Scope so. for a lot of different stuff. Very good. So, uh, for going to the new arrivals, yep. uh, again, remember to pick the color on this car. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we have no Richards, not a guest. It was. And not Richard's first car, actually. Oh, really? Very nice. Very nice. So that's why it was uh, was easy to pick for you. Very good. So, what did we receive this week? A few things. Uh, we've got... Let's start off. Oh, well, I can see this thing coming great with the... Uh, the most exciting one. This is the most exciting one. I think it is. Well, that, we've got a miniature Gacha Gacha machine. So, yeah, they're even known as Gacha Pond machines or Gacha machines. So, if you've ever been to Japan, these are the particular vending machines yeah which are everywhere i mean you see firstly exactly. when you go into the Narita airport they're everywhere on the ground floor and pretty much they um dispense little um uh, lucky balls yes so you don't actually see what's inside and um but you get an idea of what may be in there there's the a subject idea. really normally yeah that's yeah. right so it's an idea of collecting them as you go and um so here you go you've got bandai they've actually produced a miniature version of their own bandai um capsule uh, station you actually mount these on top of each other because the real ones actually stack Stacks. on top of it. Yeah. yeah. So the whole idea is it's got miniature um, uh, Lucky Balls. So these ones here, that's a full size Lucky Ball. So these are the typical sort of things you find in a vending machine. The ones inside are half this size and they're empty. So you can actually put whatever you like into them. That's right. So you can use them for a party, like a birthday party, um, office party, any yeah, party. Any party. Like. Yeah. Like you could just use it as something for a, a reward. So you get a little token, you put it inside as a coin. You turn, 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 turn. and then it drops out. Absolutely. So that's that's part of the machine as well. So the the machine got its name from the sound. So when you turn, when you put in your coin, and you turn it, it goes gacha, yeah, gacha, and then when the ball comes out, it goes pong. 
So that's how you got the gacha gacha pond there. That's right. So that's cool. So it came in. So for those who haven't been in Japan, Japan is full of this kind of stuff. Oh, There's yeah. shops that are only doing this. So yes. you walk into these shops and uh, they only have these kind of machines. They've got hundreds and you can buy virtually anything from hobby stuff to noodles to yes. any other yeah. thing you can possibly imagine and more. Yes. So, at so, the airport, as you as you arrive at the airport, it's a <laughs> perfect place to get a taste of this. That's right. And then you go around Japan and this streets yeah, full of shops over. with uh, big machines, so gigantic. Yeah. They can be really large size bottles yes. as well. So there's yes. all little different sizes actually. So well, I might crack these open. And, we and should crack those open. Yeah, give so an idea of what's in them. What's in here? These are really cool. We received them a week or so ago. Yeah. So these are the new uh, Kyoto uh, gachas. So different subjects. So they release something every couple of months. So we've got this one here. This is the skeletons with winter sports. Yes, which is that's pretty much. <laughs> that is actually good fun. So you got no idea what's in it, right? It's perfectly opaque. You can't see inside. So pops surprise, out. surprise. And then you, you just got to crack it open and see what's in there. Okay, so pops open like that. And then you've got a little description. We use this camera here. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So here we go. So that's a little little leaflet that comes with it. It shows the entire range that you can collect. So there's their do with the snowboard, really cool. Yeah, carling. Yep. Got a skier. Skier. Uh, uh, you got the, the figure skater with the teddy bear. The teddy bear and the speed skater. And the speed skater. Yeah. And they're really cool. They're, some of those come with a helmet. Um, see what we've got here actually. So they come in this sort of thing here. Well, it looks like we've got a speed skater. Speed skater. So as you can see, skates. Yep. The helmet. And there's a stand there. Stand. Because the skeleton is actually jointed so you can it's change the moving. poses yeah you can pause it and it yep. actually stays really well might just move it around here yeah you probably get a better idea from that angle there so you need to assemble it yep. it will come apart and you can put it back together so they're quite modular yep and uh yeah you need to put in the um install the helmet skis mm. you need to remove the feet to put the uh skis the skates on so you can uh pop off the, oh, yes. the feet Yep. And then you pop on the, the um, skates. Uh, skates. Yep. And so you can have it standing as a normal. Yep. Yeah, let's call it normal. Yep. Uh, or as the normal as it can be. Or you can have them as a as a skater. Even the jaw moves up and oh, down. Oh, the jaw moves up and down. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, so really good fun, actually. So you can use these for a diorama as well. Here's them for you kit could, bashing. Actually. Yeah, you could. These, the, are these to a scale? Well, looking at it, it's probably like 120 scale. 120, yeah, I was yeah, just going to say they're quite large. maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the Skeleton Winter Sports version. Yes. So I'm sure later on there will be a different sports version coming out with them. Yes. And then we've got this little fella here. This is cute. So this one, let's just crack them open. I think you've got more uh, sticker there. Oh, he's, more, a bit, he's, more a bit, tape. he's a bit tight. All right, let's just undo that a bit. So. All right, so let's see what's in here. Here we go, look at this. Aha. Okay, we've got the panda. The panda's leaping. Yes. So this particular version's got the... Bad. The cot, yep. Yep. And the little blanket. And then you've got the panda. So the panda, you can pose it as well. So it's, it's arms move. And it's legs move as well. So you can have it sitting, lying, standing. Standing, running. Yep. So again, you've got your little leaflet. This is six different ones. Yep. So got the go. baby pandas. Yes. They look a bit funny, you know? They? they look like little pigs. <laughs> Big pandas. And yep. then got a the panda playing with the with the tire. Yep, the tire one. The and one with the with the milk. With a milk bottle. Yep. And so there's five different ones by the look of it, yes. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, so that's what Gutcher is all about. Indeed. Pretty simple thing, but I mean it's pretty exciting when you get them. They're not particularly expensive and yeah. gives you a bit of a thrill. Definitely does. Yeah, definitely does. So and every few months, probably twice a year, these guys tend to do a different release from memory. Yes, so we right. had a few different ones before. Yeah, we had all the uh, the Mac ones for yes. a while. Yeah, unfortunately the Mac ones are all finished now. We've got a Done. few left, but yeah. Not too many. Yeah. Very good, very good. So, got a few few notes here. So Anthony suggesting you can buy underwear in the in the gacha balls. That's, oh, we, that's, were, we were discussing that. We were discussing that <laughs> without uh, going into details. Yes. Uh, we hear that it's possibly true. Yes, and possibly not a good idea as well. So. Yeah, probably not, but uh, <laughs> everything is possible. Uh, Anthony is asking how much is the cost of the tokens. Well, I guess um, 
the tokens for which one? For the, for the go well, for this one here, they're included. Four. Yeah, it comes yeah. with four that you can use. So I guess if you want more, you could probably um, cast them more. But the whole idea, I think, is just pop them in there, get your little gacha ball yeah. out, and then you just keep reusing the tokens. That's right. That's yeah. right. So uh, in in Japan, the price changes. I think yeah, a little bit depending what what this yeah. the content may be. Yeah, really. the average is around about five hundred yen, but yeah. it can go up to like thousand yen as well. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So. Was, uh, yeah, so uh, looks like a few people missed their uh, train. They're asking about train stuff. So today oh. we, we were talking about the buffer stops that we are producing in the Hearns Workshop. So let's quickly go back to this. Um, so Hearns Workshop uh, is manufacturing these new buffer stops mm. uh, designed for Victorian rail type layouts, mm. uh, typically um, what they used to they used to install. Mm. Uh, let's quickly go here so you guys can see it. So we've got a couple of different versions. It's a version fully detailed with a with a foundation, yep. with a concrete, I guess the way wooden slippers, uh, all the full construction, and then there is a simplified version which is only uh, the two posts and the and the board, but they're fully detailed with the bolts mm. and um, I guess you can see here hopefully the real ones are really here. beefy. They're very beefy. What were they though? Like one and a half meters tall or something. One point like six that. meter tall. Yeah. yeah. So these are H L scale, and they will go on. Uh, um, Obviously, HL rail, 16.5 millimeter gauge. It worked really well with the new um, B class um, Absolutely. Big rail stuff that came yeah. out from Ausigen. Ausigen, yeah. Mm. So we, we should actually brought some of those today. Yeah. yeah. We, we yeah. should. Uh, let's see if uh, uh, we can grab a couple of the B classes from the front. Let's see if someone can go. Can you go and get the B classes from Marlin? Thank, Thank you. you. Cool. Okay, so this is for new stuff. Uh, yeah, we had a few. No. Honka yes. model. Yes. Honka model. Well, we just received a notification that they're releasing the new 48 scale uh, Lancaster. Lancaster. Is that correct? That's yeah. Right. So, brand new release will be a 48 Lancaster, but today. So, we're going to see this. No, yeah. this is the this nose gun. That's yeah, a yeah. restock. Yep. So, that's a restock. So, this is the 30 second scale yep. cockpit, cockpit area of the Lancaster. But then there's going to be the 48 scale one, which they just announced today. Correct. So that's great because 48 scale is a scale that a lot more people can handle. More manageable. Yeah. Okay, the, the original one was, I guess, this long. Yes. Roughly. So yes. we'll take lots of space in your shed to build that one. Yes. And even more to store it once it's finished. Well, it's about a meter, meter long in the wingspan. Wow. So the latest thing to come in is actually this one. So this is the 48 scale of the B-17 uh, Flying Fortress. So this is the F model. So the G model here came out last year. Yep. And um, that's basically based on the original 30 second scale, really massive B70NG. So they all had interior detail right. and they've just made it smaller to 48 scale, simplified it a little bit and got these kits here. That's and they're, they're basically less than half the price of the 30 second scale right. kit. Pretty yeah. good value. And the yeah. detail is, is very, very fine. Oh, magnificent. Still. Yeah. We actually uh, done a couple of unboxing yes. uh, this week, so you should see them coming out sometime next week yeah that's right so particularly and this one the b17f that's it and this one is for the um the memphis bell so the memphis bell is really really uh famous that's uh, right aircraft so yeah, it's been a couple of movies one of my Absolutely. favorite movies was there, the memphis bell so these just come in really nice Hong Kong model, so jump on our youtube channel follows so yep. you can see the unboxing of those that's right there's a fantastic level of detail on yep. those and so lancaster the lancaster will be in a similar size box for these that's right they come out. 48 scale lancaster hmm very much needed, so we'll have yeah. pre-orders for those very soon. Yes. Very good. And it looks like a train arrived. A train, so we have actually have a train, so we can do a full demonstration on the buffer stops. All right, there you go. So, this uh, uh, a truss is a brand new release from Ocision. Ocision is an Australian manufacturer of, obviously, Australian model trains. Mm. Uh, very well known, and they produce this really detailed uh, V-Class. Yes, well, V-Classes uh, are very, very popular. Absolutely. They were available some time ago, made by Lima, um, oh. but nowhere to this sort of standard. No. Yep. Let's see if we can uh, jump here and give a bit more context. For a start, um, you can see all the photo etching here. Yeah, so all, all the all grill. This, yeah, so that fine detail is some of the stuff that sets it apart. So you can actually see behind the grills and That's all right. the detail That's right. within the, uh, uh, the engine area. And then even these fan covers on the top are super fine. So you can see through all these. Yes. So lots of details. There's a plaque here in, which is gold plated. Yep. Um, it's a special commemoration from memory. Yep. And all the chrome handles. All the chrome handles. The steps, yes. actually. Uh, yes. I can see the step strap. <coughs> steps here. Uh, so this is the nice part. So there's some more chrome uh, hand, like attachments there. Yeah. 
the light is actually functional so this right. is a this is a sound uh a quick type uh, locomotive so yep. we'll have sound yeah uh, we're on dcc so you have uh of the startup sound uh there's inertia and all that kind of stuff so this will run really really nicely actually uh, we have done a video review which should come out again in the next few days mm. yeah and we got three or four different colors there's a traditional vra vrail uh yellow yeah gold gold and blue yes uh, and it's a couple of different uh schemes as well mm. So that's really good. So, so with the review video, you'll be able to get closer, closer uh, images. Image. Yeah, definitely. But so. yeah, it's definitely it's really impressive. And the sound is really good too. Mm. It's very realistic. Yep. And it's got the start up uh, sequence, which is quite nice. And then, as it starts, as it goes, yep. when it goes on breaks, stopping, and all that, and turning off. So yep. It's really cool. nice. So. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, we've got quite a few new things that turned up. Absolutely. Yeah. So. All right. So we've got that B class. Okay. So we've got a few of our kits. Um, so uh, I see. I see. Yeah, there we go. Something. So we have seen some of those last year actually. The Suzuki Jimny was out last year in this color, yep. and arrived again in uh, I think it's a, a we call it a lime kind of green, and hmm. now they have done this kind of really nice blue. It's actually. a bright blue. Uh, very it, bright blue. It, it looks metallic, does it? It is a metallic blue. Yes, it is. So. Those who are new to this, Mini Z 4x4. Mini Z, there is a lot of history behind the Mini Z, but the right. 4x4 are really new. Yep. So this is like a crawler type one, isn't it? This is a crawler. Mm. This is phenomenal. So, mm. what's probably the, be what's the best part of this Mini Z, in your opinion? Well, I think because they designed it around about the same size as 24 scale. That's right. So you can actually modify a car to fit the particular chassis and drive it around. So it's, it's you can put any body shells, really. Yes. And from a more practical practical perspective they run on double a batteries yes and that makes it really easy so you don't need to charge they're very mm -hmm. portable you can put them in your luggage when you go on holiday mm -hmm. when you go to the beach for the day or or anywhere else and you just pop in a couple of double a's and you're off you go very portable but even, even though they're small i mean there's obviously some smaller cheaper type cars these particular ones have the same feel as a larger temp scale that's right they've got the really smooth servo action that's right really smooth throttle control Absolutely. So they they they're proportional steering. Yes. So normally when you get small cars, it's, the steering is either on and off, so you, you can't really control it. But this is designed as a full scale uh, crawler, little mm. crawler. It's really really well made. So uh, Mini Z 4x4. Jump on YouTube, have a look. They're good fun. So we may do an unboxing uh, eventually of those as well. Mm. So we have a question here. Yeah. Can the RC be driven over small puddles? Ooh, that's a good question. They can be. They so can be. It, it all depends on the RC, of course. Yes. So some RC are better uh, protected than others. That's correct. So electronics always problem is water. You know, water. moisture, anything like that. That's right. Now a lot of people do ask us, is it okay to drive on the beach? Sure, it's okay to drive on the beach, but salt water is and the sand biggest killer. Are, are a killer. Yeah. Generally speaking, when they say they're waterproof, yep. they're water resistant, so you can have a splash. So if yep. you go on wet grass or you're going to puddle by mistake, it's probably okay. Yes. But keep in mind, the electronics may be protected. But bearings and other metal parts may not be well protected. Yep. You can't really protect bearings from water. So you can process it into water, but you have to maintain it. And you have to accept there may be some small failures on some bearings or perhaps electronics too. So, yep. so it's really uh, important to make sure it's dry absolutely. at the end of the day. Absolutely. So yep. it, it's up to you if you're going to water. It's good fun. Mm. I've done it. Uh, a couple of times went really well. And then a couple of other times didn't go <laughs> as well. So yeah, um, yeah. It, it's... Uh, it's that's uh, good fun, but it can produce some consequences. So, 50-50. Mm. I've got a question for you guys. Yes. Sure. If these did get somewhat water damaged, could you do a similar trick like you do with phones and put it in rice to let it draw the moisture out, or that won't do it enough? Probably not. I think I think the best way is to pull them apart as much yes. as you can, and just give it a good clean. These are all modular, so you know they're manufacturing small parts, and you can pull them all apart, clean them, replace what's potential damage like yep. bearings or whatsoever yep. and then put them back together and they come back as pretty much as new really yeah. there's no wrong nothing wrong with it yeah so things like uh, the, the servos and the speaker controls quite often they've got a, a seal around them yes. so they're splash proof but the issue is when they're sitting around the humidity gets it inside inside eventually so either a fan or even a hairdryer that that's helps right. out a lot that's right so mm. cool thank you tony for the question okay. so i think we have brett that's going to show us a couple of the new couple of the new cars popping oh yes so so these cars are really exciting, aren't they? 
They are. So this is we we have built pretty much a full range of hot bodies. Oh. Hello. hello, 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 and hello. Come here. 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 You're in the middle. Here we are. Fantastic. I'll oh, hold this one. That's, that's, you hold that's, this my, one? that's my baby. <laughs> that's baby. I'm gonna hold this one. So, what have you done this time around? <clears throat> Looks like a buggy. Well, yeah, this is the buggy. Now, this is the buggy that we had on last week's show um, that was partially completed. Yep. Now, as you can see, uh, it is Fully. in its finality. Uh, yeah, it's got stickers, it's been painted, uh, set up, had the electrics installed. It is fantastic. Um, Jeff at JSpec did some beautiful stickers for us on this, some custom stickers, which really helped. Well, bring it really up. mesh your body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've used, uh, I used a Biddy Design stencil on that. I'm not sure if we can pick it up. Oh, we'll get a close uh, up we on can, that, I think. And you jump on the top of here. Here we go. Should be good enough. So those so, stencils come out really well. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. There's a lot of glare from obviously being a clean, clean body. Very clean, yeah. Hasn't run yet. No, no. It's, yeah, nearly, it's nearly too pretty to... Uh, You've got that so, chameleon paint on it as well, haven't you? Yes, yes. I put some... Uh, a bit of SMS cosmic dust down before I put any colors on. So you um, can see that as you're rotating it around, it's picking up some accents. Yeah, yeah, it's really is quite hard on the camera to pick it up, but it does look better in, does look in the skin. It looks really, it. looks really, it's really nice. nice. You can definitely see this color. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Can you pop yep. some of this uh, um, color changing pearl While we've got uh, this camera on, we might take a look at the, the electronics. It's probably the best way to uh, see those in there. Yep. Uh, anybody who's followed the build on, uh, on Facebook on the Hearns Racing page would um would have seen it sort of coming together and it was nearly was nearly finished as of this morning's post but obviously it was a, a bit ahead of time. So we've gone with the um dash electronics here. Mm -hmm. Um maybe considered a, a bit overpowered at 2650 kV. Oh can you have too much power? No no but that's Never. up to uh Come on. that's up to Richard Hopkins to sort out. <laughs> he's gonna be the he's the owner and the driver of this oh, one right. so with the full adjustments and the parameters that we've got available on the um, the Dash AI 220 amp uh, ESC, mm -hmm. we should be able to tune it down and hopefully get Enough. it nice and nice and drivable. Drivable, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you can see there that we've put out a Racing Performer Hyperfan um, right up in there to try and keep it all nice and cool yep. and running smooth. Yep. Um, and then we've made that to uh, our highest. Uh, BP210 uh, steering servo, which I've forgotten the specs off from the top of my head, from but I think oh, it's 30 yeah 30, 30 plus kg with yeah. a really quick transit time. Mm -hmm. um, and we've gone with a bit of bling there and put the, the dash um, beautifully presented, um, machined and anodized servo horn on there. Well, coordination with color is really important. That's right. That's right. the speed because so, the speed is in I the mind. I think so. Yeah, 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 so we need yeah. to ask what people think about the orange wiring. That's I right. I think it's perfect because it matches their whole body. Yeah, yeah, it's all but about that. But I know there will be some different opinions of there. So let us know what you think about the orange. Yeah, it's a wiring. bit of a trend lately to have all black, isn't it? All the fast yeah, guys, all the factory to white. guys. It's a bit too stealth, did, though. Don't you think? I think so. We, we did need white. a bit of mascara going on. We did uh, white on the. Um, BD10 that we did, the touring car. Hmm. So the GT uh, and this one for Rich, I, I went the path of, of orange. Hi. We've also got a, a performer, P1 performer, um, five and a half thousand milliamp uh, four cell battery in there, lipo battery, and that should be plenty powerful enough to uh, get it to the end of a 10 minute race. It's really nice and stumpy, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice and stumpy. And we're available to, um, you'll see more pictures on, on Facebook when I, put it in the setup station and actually balance the car up with the with the brass weights here. Um, you can see that they're they're actually a hot bodies part now. They they add those as an extra so you can optimize your um, weight distribution left and right or front and rear. Um, this one we did with uh, I set this one up at ride height with a, a 49 uh, 51 weight distribution. Mm. So it's going to be slightly slightly heavier on the rear which is uh, hopefully the way to go but being a being a new entrant for us well for for richard and and myself i haven't really done uh eighth ep buggy before so it'd be really interesting to get this out on track yeah. and uh, it probably is, uh it's quite a new class anyway so mm. lots of uh lots of us were racing nitro and slowly we're transitioning to ep so it's a bit yeah of a learning curve. yeah and i really think it's it's a really a really good way forward um now you might not have seen this last time 
on the, the hot bodies racing, but we had the, the beautifully machined uh, caster blocks and stuff, if I can oh, get yeah. it. Oh yeah, yes, yep. They're in a stealth um, black. They're really in a stealth black. Um, yeah, we've got carbon arms on there now, inserts. Again, it's hard really to hard to catch all the Justin fine details. Yeah. It's Justin really good yeah. how they got those um, tuning options. Plate, yeah. yeah. Very tunable, as you can see. Very tunable. We've got AKA Bodies, obviously is one of our strong brands here at, at Hearns. AKA um, Tires. AKA Tires, tires yeah. Yep. Yep. So they'll adorn this machine and hopefully provide us a grip. We've got a dash electronics package as far as the motor and speedy. Mm -hmm. We've got the Performer battery, the higher servos. We've got yep. all the good gear in there. It really has got no excuse not to, uh, well, it feels good on to go well. Yeah, well, hopefully. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. I've gone with uh, a lot of people's uh, setups and advice on this have helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. A big thank you to uh, Michael Cook and to Savage Sam mm -hmm. for all their input and help. Um, obviously, like I said, it's a, a new thing for me to do this. Get this a lot different to just building one to actually getting one ready for race. Absolutely. And this is 100% ready to hit the track. Um, and also we've used the Biddy Design body, of course, which is, uh, yeah, really vision. beautiful. It's a vision for it's the a vision. E819, specifically yeah. designed. Oh, a little duck tail at the back. Yeah, yes, that, the 8 cool. scale guys are really spoiled. They don't have to cut bodies. They don't have to glue tires. Um, yeah, I think the, the 10 scale guys are hard done by at the moment. I don't know oh, what's going on. So. I think so. Hey? I think so. Um, and, and, uh, and so you have your car stand as well. Yeah, I took the, the opportunity. Oh, look at that. That's class. The, the Biddy, it is a, a solid Lexan or Perspex car stand. I took the opportunity while I was painting the body to paint up a color coordinated and matching car stand for it. So that's, that's a oh, nice wow. little feature there too. And here? Here we have, we have it's big brother. The big brother. Now there's been a bit of hype about this lately, obviously because this is a brand new vehicle out mm. of the hot body stables. Yes. And this week actually we've just had the nitro. This landed probably what a fortnight, maybe three weeks ago. Absolutely. Mm. This has been built, um, yeah obviously this one hasn't been run yet. This is earmarked for maybe a, a crazy velodrome project probably. or some insane speed runs. But this is a force to be reckoned with in the, in the truggy racing Definitely. scene. Definitely. Um, and it's Nitro Brother just dropped like two days ago. So effectively, as close as anything can be to to the, the Nitro itself, as far as the, the chassis and the, the configuration, suspension, steering, everything like that, the center diffs moved a little bit more rearward. The Nitro mode is mounted here, uh, sorry, over here, and then we've got the fuel, the fuel, fuel tank, tank and the radio plate over here so it's a little bit different but very beefy. very same very beefy front end i guess they're, they're uh, front end rear end are pretty much the same so all the uh drivetrain is virtually identical oh identical mm. absolutely so identical if you have one or the other you can swap parts around um, yeah if you use it for uh, uh parts and so forth absolutely yeah. they do Makes have sense. a different gearbox ratio to counteract for That's the bigger right. wheels, bigger wheels yeah. Um, it's going to be hard probably with this angle, but to have a look at the size difference between the two. Maybe oh, if well, we have a look at the two mode. Put it on two mode. Yeah, yeah put it on top. Look at it. It's just. So, I mean, the main differences are the, the longer chassis and the longer arms, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Like, it doesn't even, the the truggy doesn't even fit on the camera. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's effectively fitting inside it. Exactly. And, and this truggy here could be. Or for competition built exactly the same way that we same built. electronics same, same batteries, same exactly everything. same as everything so, so people that don't know what is a truggy truggy is a big a big uh, a big buggy and it's obviously made to well not obviously but it's made to look like a truck so, so a they truck weren't buggy. very creative um they've obviously got half buggy and half truck yep um and managed to come up with with truggy so it's just hard to catch it all on, on camera but yeah behind it it's dwarfed and yeah, so we actually have a question here. Hmm. Absolutely. Tony's asking what is the top speed of uh, of these cars? <laughs> Which? Well, it really depends. I mean, it's obviously it's designed um, to go around a, a miniature supercross track, yes. you know, so it's geared um, and powered in a way to, to maximize lap times, not so much straight line speed. So but, I guess something like that would be doing about 80 kilometers an hour. I'd guess. say so. The, these electronics are the same that we run on the GT. Exactly yeah, the the same. So, so potentially you could get these on the 100Ks That's an what hour. I was going to uh, say. Plus, no, plus, plus, plus. Yes. There's no the reason that this wouldn't go is exactly the same speed that we had our GTE recently. But, 
Um, and in fact, this buggy is probably closer related to the GTE Correct. than it is to the Truggy. Mm -hmm. They are really the same vehicle, just with shorter shocks and shorter shock towers, as yep. we've spoken before. But yeah, so huge horsepower, great fun, and so strong. Good really looking to forward. It's an off-road car, so you don't need that speed often enough for, for, the, for the racing. No. You need more the um, acceleration. Acceleration. And being able to control it more mm. than the speed. So in a race, probably you're going to go more closer to the 60 to 70 k's an hour, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, but just, just on a straight line, really. Hopefully it's just as fast as all the other ones. Well, hopefully it's faster. Yeah, mm. At Absolutely. the end of the day, that's Absolutely. all you want it to be. As long as you're faster than the fastest buggy, that's Indeed. all that matters. And uh, for a start, Tony loves our orange wiring, which is good. Oh, oh got got one, one other. There, there you go. go. And that's about all I've come in for. Um, and all this actually is in anticipation of the Hearns Hobbies EMCC Cup. That's right. From the that's 2021. That's in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, so mm. that's on Labor Day weekend. Um, at this stage, the 6th and 7th of March. Yeah. Let's hope that that doesn't um, get pushed back. Yeah. Everything's going well. So, yeah, they've got a Saturday is practice day and Sunday is race day. So, it's they're calling about, it a... It's at Knox area. Yeah, 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 I think it's right. located. Yeah. I think they're calling it one turn south. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, it's eastern suburbs, sort of Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to getting down there. So, I won't be driving, but I will be pitting for this car. Uh, yeah, Richard Richard Hopkins will be driving this for us, and uh, yeah, we'll be there in force, hopefully getting some good content, getting some feedback, Absolutely. and uh, trying some new products as well, hopefully. Why not? Fantastic, guys. Well, that's cool. all cool. I've got for Thank this week. Thank you for popping in. Yeah, thanks no for worries at all. all right. Thank you for having me. Do I get to keep this one? Yeah, why don't oh, we keep this one? Oh, oh, oh. For it. Oh. We're gonna Thank put, you. Thank you. We're going to put this one on the front here, just so that we... That's cool, isn't it? It's, it's really good. matching matching stand we should actually do a quick uh, a quick session one day here on the live on bt design product because bt design is now having a really good range of products and accessory which you can uh custom custom paint really yes you've got the new stencils which mm. is actually what brett used to paint those actually let's quickly jump on this mm. so if you see all so these effects here are done with some stencils so it's all like a really brushed. thin like uh, vinyl or Correct. nylon type of plastic Correct. so uh, and uh, and this is all produced by BT Designs. There is liquid masking, yep. and uh, the only thing missing are paints from them hmm. at this point. But we, we have many of those used. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, okay, so it's a car stand. Yep. Well, as we're talking about paints, yep. we're, we're going to have a conversation, yep. actually a tutorial, on how to get started with an airbrush set. Yes. So I'm going to go through the absolute basics of Correct. connecting all the equipment up, mixing up some paint. And we'll just spray it on a bit of paper just and to see what happens. Yep, we'll show you how it all goes. So, so I mean, th these are sort of uh, obvious things that um, I guess are obvious to us, but exactly. it may not be obvious to everyone else. So, we're going to start off with, with our compressor. So, this is our really ancient compressor that we use on various projects. Absolutely. Rob, Rob, who used to work here, painted hundreds of bodies with this, uh, with this compressor. He did. Um, and there's a few other people that borrowed this over the time, so it has uh, seen a bit of action. Yeah, it's been around. Uh, so let me grab the other components here. So just as a quick uh, explanation, so this particular compressor is the tank type. So on the top you've got the, the actual compressor motor. So it's going to be drawing air inside, and then it, um, it blows it into this tank here, which holds onto it. And then when this particular tank is up to pressure, this switches off, and then you uh, draw off the air through this um, hose that I'm connecting up to your airbrush. So first thing I'm doing, I'm just screwing on the end of the hose. Let's see. Got a power here. I've got a little holder here. So a holder is really handy so that your airbrush doesn't fall on the side and the, the paint goes everywhere. Okay, so I've got one of our airbrushes there. So this is gravity feed. It's got double action, so double action basically means you pull it back, controls the needle, gives you more paint flow. You press it down, and that'll give you um, more or less pressure. That's right. Okay, so we'll leave this here. All right, other thing you need to do is you need to plug it in. Okay, so that's important, no power. Yeah, no pressure. No power, no play. That's it. Okay, so on the bottom of these tank type ones, they've got a, uh, a breather valve, which you normally leave loose. That's so all the, the moisture inside the tank can escape. If you don't do this every time, then it'll all rust up. So make sure that's tightened up. That's tight. And I'll switch it on. A bit nosy. Off it goes. Not too nosy. It's 
think it should be okay. If it's too noisy, let us know because I can move this quite easily. So over here, I've got the um, this is the water trap. So as this uh, is pumping air, the, the air will get hot from going through the compressor. Right. So when you've got hot air going into a cold tank, it condensates the water and that collects on the bottom. So that's why we relieve the bottom of the tank. That's right. And then also, if there is water after using it for a while, as it comes through, it'll get caught up in this water trap here. Now at the top of it, it's got a uh, filter as well for dirt and dust. And then this particular area here is for controlling the pressure. The pressure. And then you may not see, just over here, we've got the uh, the pressure gauge as well. And so we're operating operating this one at around about 20 feet side. Okay, so that's just going to continue on a little bit until the uh, switch off. It's almost there. All right, I'll just pop it down here. So as you can see, this is actually quite solid. So yes. this is specifically designed for, uh, I guess, indoor use, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, it's just on the floor and it's not really annoying at all. That's right. Yeah, definitely usable indoor. Um, so good option if you're airbrushing, your, even in your garage, I suppose, you know, if you spend quite a bit of time airbrushing, yep. with a big traditional garage compressor can get really, really noisy. Yes, that's right. So after a few hours, you probably... I used to use one of those. It used to scare me every time it switched on. <laughs> yeah, true. It'd go, kaboom! And you'll jump out of your seat and you'll, you'll spill it. all your paint everywhere. So, as you can hear, well, as you can not hear anymore, yes. it's, 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 uh, it's full, the tank is full. That's right, so, so the compressor switched off. Switched off. So they'll switch on automatically when the tank yeah. depletes. Okay, so I've got a couple of um, containers here which I'm going to be mixing up some paint. So we've got the Scale 75 Artist Acrylic. So that comes in these tubes. So I've just got a little container here um, for mixing it up. So basically what you have to do is, this is ready for brush painting. Yeah. It comes out very, very thick. Um, so even brush painting would normally thin it down a little bit with water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit in the container and then we're going to use this particular thinner and we're going to thin it down so we're going to airbrush with it. So basically you need to have it at a thin point so that it sprays. Yes. Uh, if it's too thick it'll spatter. Uh, if it's too thin it'll just give you a very thin very thin coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't a bad thing but uh, if you can get a, a happy medium then it'll work out a lot better. At this now, point if, you, if you're spraying and it's not coming out I would not suggest increase the pressure. Because the no. pressure often is not your problem. That's right. And if you do so, you end up drying the paint in the gun. Yep. And that will produce the opposite effect. That's right. It will block up the nozzle. Block up the nozzle. Yep. So what you're going to do, you're going to put more pressure again and yes. block it even more. Yep. So if it doesn't come out, stop, thin the paint further yep. and throw again. Yep. So Okay. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of... See if we yeah, we'll do the... Yeah, that's maybe better. Let's yep. go. Okay. okay. So I've got my um, a clean container here. I've got a cap off my, my paint. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit of paint. Just inside here. So you see that there's just a little squeeze, a little dollop. You see how thick it is, it's really creamy. Okay, and so I'm going to add thinner to it to a point where it's going to be milky. So this is one of those things of contention. A lot of people say, how do you thin down paint for airbrushing? So unfortunately, it's one of those things that you have to do with uh, a bit of um, practice. So you can get some of those um, really thin paints yeah. like SMS. Yeah. Um, or the low air. So that'll give you an idea of the sort of thickness, but you really pick the feel after you use it. That's right. So you just get this. So this is a scale 75 thinner. So it's got a little drop, uh, droplet type hole in it. So I don't know, it's probably about 10 or so drops in there and I'll just mix it through. And once I mix it, I'll have a closer look at it. One of the really simple tests is after you mix it like this, if you hold up your brush and it can create a, a drop actually a stick would probably be better because the brush is trying to keep it in there just by looking at it like this now it's looking pretty close to airbrushable I don't know if I can show you a bit give you an idea if I drop a bit on the side there so it's not actually flowing by itself that little ball you can see the bottom there, how, how liquid it is. So when we say milky, you want this to be thicker than water, basically, but not like cream. So if you're talking about, you know, dairy products, well, I think milk is the closest thing. Okay, so that's, to me, that's a milky consistency. Now, if it's a little bit thicker, doesn't matter, it'll still spray. If it'll be thinner, it'll still spray. And then from there, you can fine tune it. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. So my little trick is just hold this so the, the paintbrush up against the side and then as the liquid touches it it will guide it into 
into the, the, the bucket. So unfortunately you can't really see it there, but that's all flowed in there. While you're doing that, we've got a question for you guys. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Tony's asking, is there a general ratio or thereabouts that you recommend for thinner to paint? Uh, not really. So people ask me that in the shop all the time. So my, my general starting point, just so people have got a reference, I'd say try it with 30% yeah. thinner to, to start with. Um, because you've got a lot of different brands of paint, the pigments are different, and the bases different. are different. Yeah. yeah. And then from the 30%, because everything needs to be thin anyway, yeah. you can try it out from there, yeah. and then just tune it. Obviously, if you compare the um, Scale 75 yes. to um, Tamiya, for say, yes. Tamiya is already quite liquid. That's right. But uh, this one is really effectively a paste, really. Yes. This is quite thick. So there'll yes, be right. a huge difference in... Uh, uh, amount thinner that you're going to use with one or the other. Yes, that's right. So also you'll find that um, certain colors work better with more thinner than others. So one, one of those um, particular pigments, no matter what brand, is yellow. So yellow for some reason doesn't cover anything really. Yeah. So you try to have that mixed as thick as you can. That's sprayable. Just sprayable. Yeah. But something like black that covers almost anything, you can go a bit thinner with that. Okay, so we've got our paint inside um, the container there. We got our, it's all hooked up air pressure is up and we can start spraying so basically again it's double action so you pull back on the trigger that controls the paint flow so the further you pull it back the more paint that will come out and then the pressure is operated by pressing down so you press down a little bit you get a little bit of air you yeah. press it down all the way and then you'll get um, uh, much more uh, air pressure okay so you see you might be able to see there so that's a small little dot You can see how, how easy that is to airbrush already. So the consistency is not bad. Now if we do something consistent. Like so. And then if I use more pressure. So it's as simple as that. So the closer you are, the finer you're going to get little dots. Like so. And then you can spray with more pressure and you probably want to hold it back further so that it will be nice and smooth. Okay, and as simple as that. So just by looking at this, you can see at this point here, I've sprayed too much paint and it's starting to drip. And something you can see that from the reflection as well. You see how it's reflecting there? So this will come from experience too, that you don't want to get it to this point because otherwise that's, that's, right. that's too much. And that's going to drip and leave you with some dripping marks. marks. Yeah. Yeah. And then you find the, the final ones are already dry. So that's a simple, really quick demonstration on airbrushing. airbrushing. How everything all hooked up together, uh, how to mix up. I mean, it's a really simple mix session there, but if you just remember those, um, those hints, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And then after this, we've just got to clean it up. So being a water-based paint, well, all you got to do is um, just get the excess and pour it in just here. Just clean. Yep. Because this stuff here that we're pre-mixed, well, we seal that up when we use it again. And then we spray out the excess. It's all gone, and we just use some water. Got some water in here. Actually, we can just use thinners, so. So you use thinners or water. Obviously the water's going to be cheaper, you just get that out of the tap. Just flush this out. Okay. At the end of this stage, yeah, I'll use something like this. We'll wipe out the uh, the cup. Just put that in there. Wipe out the cup. Okay, so you can see that's pretty shiny in there. Spray out any excess. And then, before I finish, I'll just put in a couple more drops. So that's spraying absolutely pure thinner through it. That's it. And that's it. It's perfectly clean. Yep. And then you can just hear the compressor just fired up again. That's pretty much it. Very so good. That? I've got a question for you guys with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Say if you've got particularly stubborn paint that might move, could you use a paintbrush to, uh, with thinners to clean out inside the injection nozzle there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So paintbrush is always handy for doing that too. So just like the paintbrush I used before for mixing, just go like this. And this will clean out all the, the crevices okay. on the inside, yeah. Just wipe it down. There you go. Off you go. Uh, 
obviously the, the airbrush can be fully uh, disassembled. Uh, yes. We actually have a video on on, uh, on our channel showing that. Yeah. But you, you, if um, perhaps you spray with too much pressure, the paint dries inside. You may have to give it a clean so you can remove uh, the nozzle, the needle, everything, and just go in with a brush, some yeah. thinner, and give it a good clean. So yeah, if you well, have the feel that is blocked, just do it as soon as you can before yes. it start drying in. Yes. Because uh, once they specifically acrylic paints are dry, they're going to be really hard to clean. Yes. So just give it a good clean with a the brush. There's uh, some nice kits to with different size brushes that you can just put from the front, yeah. from the back. Just yeah. Pull everything well, I apart. Could, I could quickly pull this one apart. We could actually. Yeah, yeah. I'll just get I'll get the excess air out of the um, compressor. The compressor. Could be a bit noisy for a second. Yep. Then, and then some space here. Just and just make it easier apart. to pull apart. I will also say that the scale seventy five paint is very vibrant for such a paint. So I've never seen it so clear. It's so clear. Yeah, it's, it's a very very nice pigment. So it's it's incredibly um, concentrated. Okay, so we just pop that there. So let's jump on this other camera again. This way. Okay, so double action um, airbrushes are all very similar in design. I mean, the design of the actual tool goes back um, probably close to 100 years. So they've been used in art for a long, long time. So you've got your whole body here. Let's move it there, so it's a bit easier to see. Okay, so you get your back section. I've got a, um, uh, a stop here. Not all airbrushes have this. Basically what that does is controls how far your trigger goes back. Okay, so at the moment that's at full movement. If I screw that in, you might see the trigger moving forward. And that's a, a travel control. So basically at the moment I've got to set so that you have hardly any control. <coughs> okay, so first thing you do is you undo the back section. It comes oh, off. God. And it shows you a little um, clasp here. So this is a, a screw cl uh, clasp that holds onto the needle. So you've got the back of the needle, you can just see at the back here. And you just undo that. Just a little turn, just like that. That's like a quarter of a turn. And then the needle comes straight out. Okay, now as you pull them out, you need to pull it out straight out. So yeah, this particular point here is really, really sharp. So it's really important that that doesn't bend because if it does bend, then it'll start blowing the air in a different direction. So you won't have nice perfect dots or really straight lines. Okay, so once you've got your um, your needle out, the important thing is you just want it clean. So as you can see, it's pretty clean already. What you can do is you can just wipe it off with a rag, like so. So it's perfect there. Next thing to do would be um, the nozzle itself. So there's a uh, there's an end cap. So you undo the end cap. Put some screws, comes off like that. And you'll notice that the brass section's here. So, I wonder if you can actually see that. It'll focus up, see? yep. Okay, so the pointy part there is the nozzle. So occasionally, because it's tapered, if you've got dry paint um, getting into here, it'll sometimes get stuck on the nozzle and stopping spraying. So what you need to do is, you get your nozzle removing tool, so it would be quite often be a spanner like this so you see a little cutout on it and that uh, matches up with some notches in the uh, nozzle just like that see the focus yep. so you've got to be very gentle with this because because it's brass it's got brass um, uh, into brass yeah and the threads are really fine so basically with this you just want to unnip it like this so get to a point where you can undo it with your fingers. So at the moment it's still a little bit tight. Now you've got to be very careful with this because these are actually really small and if, if I dropped it at the moment we'll probably lose it. So just be careful, go like this. Oh, off it comes. Okay, so it's still attached here. So what it is, you'll probably see all the components here. Yeah, just how small it is. So let's just move that bit of dust out of the way there. Okay, like this here. So there's a nozzle there. So important thing is you want that clean. So easiest thing to do is you look through it into some light. So if I look at through it into some light here, and I can see the light coming straight through it, so that's fine. But just say it was you couldn't see any light or it was a very fine light, then you want to clean the inside of that. So to clean that, you can use um, a sharpened toothpick, yeah. or you can use um, uh, specialized um, brushes, brushes very that fine go brushes. through. Yep. And so it's very important that you clean it out. Uh, because if it doesn't clean out, it will get blocked 
uh, it will get to a point where you see bubbling coming back up the cup and that's usually because this section here is being blocked that's right yeah and then after it's all cleaned up now to put it back into place you need to spend quite a bit of time and uh, be careful in screwing this on because you don't want to cross thread it if the threads go on the wrong angle then they'll get damaged and they won't be sealed and sorry I'm just concentrating here at the moment all right so you can see there I've just put it on with my my finger force Let's see if I can get this to focus there we go oh, here we go gets there okay so just got about half a mil left and so we'll get it as close as we can with our fingers okay like so and then this is a really important step too so when you tighten it up let me just get this aligned with the flats now you want to feel it so that so you're moving it really gently with hardly any force so I'm just barely pushing it and you'll feel the point where you get the most resistance and at the point of most resistance you probably just nip it up like this and that's it now if we went any further it will tear all the, the threads right. off that's pretty much it to getting it back on now what, the other thing you may notice is that if you take this off often they've got a seal inside and um, that seal stops the air from the outside from going in to here so what you might notice is if you take off the nozzle and it's clear and you put it back on and it's still not spraying properly it's got air coming back up the cup yeah. it's probably got air leaking through the nozzle and the bodywork so you need to reseal it we have specialist um, airbrush sealant or the simplest thing I've found when you're in a rush you want to fix things up is you use a little bit of um, the tiniest bit of Vaseline or even um, uh, lip balm so a bit of um, petroleum jelly just a little touch on a couple of threads and when you screw it all up it'll be airtight and so that's it for the nozzle so you screw it back on being careful not to damage anything so that screws on like so and then needle goes in so I take a bit of time to guide the needle in with my finger so I put it on like so make sure the very tip doesn't touch anything so until it's straight push it all the way in the other important thing is when it's going in you don't want to push too hard either because otherwise it will flare open the, uh, the nozzle okay so it feels like it's homed in like so and then once that is tighten the back up that clasp put the backpack on it that's it that's ready to go done. simple as that very good yeah so this to demonstrate the airbrushing yes it's really powerful and it's not that complicated no um, you need a few basic tools mm. uh, and a bit of patience but it, it's all possible so mm. to produce uh, body shells like they were in the brat show before or, yeah, or, even or like this. something like this yes um, or obviously dioramas like the one we present in the competitions yes, yes. Uh, a good airbrush um, make really good results that's right and, uh, and not um, particularly not, expensive either you can get really basic ones correct and mm. it's not very really difficult a little bit of mm. maintenance as we saw it's not difficult it looks very complicated but mm. it's not really yes so I'm uh, um, just uh, give it a go mm. I suppose it's, yeah, uh, sure. it's a lot easier than we often think so yeah it can be scary when you think about that's it right. and you see the results coming out that's right but when you actually use them uh, just follow a few really basic tips that are correct. shown and should be good so just uh, pick a few tutorials online and uh, shouldn't be too difficult yeah and in any case we're here so if you're stuck with anything yeah that's right you can do a quick tutorial either yep. live or or on our YouTube channel yeah for sure so very good so it's getting late today then over an hour already oh is it so I think the next tutorial on RC cars may be postponed to next week sure makes sense I think no worries so let's see if anyone has any more questions otherwise what about the color Ah, the colour. We, we haven't agreed on the colour yet. We haven't agreed on the colour, so let's give it a minute, see if anyone can come up with a colour. Maybe they need a hint. I think it's a blue. I think it's definitely blue, yes. It's a, it's a special kind of blue. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very special blue, so let's see. Anyone? There's still have quite a lot of people today online. It's a lot That's great. Quite, quite a few more than usual, which is great. So thank you everyone for joining us. It was a very different, different show today, as it was last week. Yes, you were yes, a spectator right. last week. I was. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Just, uh, just yeah. something different. Uh, so, just a quick recap. So, competition is starting this week. Yes. So, it's actually starting now. Next, it's live yeah, now. That's right. Yeah. So, so jump on uh, um, uh, Facebook. We have a, an event. We create an event for the competition. So, yes. there'll be all the details there. Yep. It's a diorama competition. So, mm. any kind of diorama. Um, 
project. That's right. It'd be it fine. Can be sci-fi. The picture I've got up there is um, a Napoleonic horseback yes. charge at the moment, but it doesn't have to do that. It can, can be, be classic. Drama. Yeah. yeah, it can be anything. So there's, you'll see the specifications of what diorama, vignette mean there. Yeah. So anything that fills in. That's you know, right. Figure. Uh, with a bit of machinery or something like that. Even, even Gundams. Even That's Gundams right. can go into That's dioramas. Right. So yep. a nice scene of Gundams would be quite exciting to see. Yes. Uh, some very nice uh, color changing, color changing colors. Yes. It would be, would be nice as well. So That's right. Uh, challenges are there. Yep. So meanwhile, Tony has a suggestion. So Tony said duck egg blue. Uh, and Paul Richard is, uh, his one was blue. Okay. So. <laughs> well, it's sort of there. Well, I mean, it's not duck egg blue. Is that that? Although I've never seen a duck blue as such. They're no. more green, aren't they? Yeah. I don't I, know. I think I think um, might might be a, one of those special golden ducks. Get, getting inspiration for some special <laughs> colours here. So, oh, let's let's get me out of their misery, right? Because I don't think anyone's going to guess. No, this, this is a difficult one. It's amberly blue. So I, I there you go. That. Were, were you excited? I was excited. Amberly blue. Which is so there you go. Very classic for uh, for the era, actually. That it is. It's, of, got uh, a, it's got a grey blue, isn't it? Grey blue, yes. Yeah. Let's see if you can pop it up here. There we go. Hmm. Um, so these are in, uh, I think, 40, uh, 43rd scale. Yep. Uh, very classic. So uh, DDA collectibles are producing a quite nice range, uh, growing range, actually, of yeah. these uh, uh, classic Australians. And they are really well priced, you know, compared to the 18 scale uh, cars that we yeah. see normally on the well, 250 mark. You, you had the one tonner on, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. very different models. Um, and they're about $50, $50 $60, so mm. it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they don't take as much space either. And the level of detail is, uh, is quite nice as well. So yeah, for sure. Very nice little collection you can make up with this DDA collectible series. Mm. So, 143 scale. Good stuff. Here we go. No, it's Very good to good. see that we've had a lot of people, so... Absolutely. I wonder so. where everyone's coming from. Yeah, we've got a lot of international guests. We have a few international, I remember seeing before, someone from the States. Um, yeah, so... Bruce has suggested that Amberley RAF base in Queensland, so it could be the original Maybe. base name. So Maybe. Possible. That's, that's a good suggestion, actually. Mm. So, very good. All right. Good so. stuff. Yeah, that was good. It's been a good show. Uh, definitely. It's so, good to be back. Good to be back. So welcome back. <laughs> so make sure you follow us throughout the week. So jump, jump on our uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, yeah. even Twitter. Yes. And obviously YouTube. And just drop us some comments. Let us know what you would like to see. Mm -hmm. um, always helps to have some ideas. Really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep uh, tuning into YouTube too, because we've done quite a few open boxes of some interesting things. Definitely. So. Get to see inside before you choose which one's good for you. Definitely. So, for now, have a good weekend, everyone. And thank you for joining us once again. So, episode number 36 done. Yep, good stuff. So, very, very uh, nicely done. So, we'll be close to be at 12 months, actually. We started last March. Yeah, so wow. Not yeah. far from doing 12 months of a live every week. So, that's uh, that'll be our birthday, I it's guess. It's been fun. Um, so, Keenan is from Canada. So, yay. Hello there. And so, have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks for joining thank us again. Thank you for watching. See bye you bye. next time.